People have been asking about more episodes. One guy on YouTube said, hey, where's episode 21? We're getting ready to do some scraping, so I, I wanted to put an edge on this little scraper. He did a nice job. We took a three quarter inch washer and made it the size of the original metric. I don't know, I never get a flu shot. I read up on it the other night and I'm not gonna, most of them have mercury in you know? them. Everybody, this is David. Wednesday, October 9th. Good morning. People have been asking about more episodes. One guy on YouTube said, hey, where's episode 21? You mean you actually got somebody? Yeah, to make a, finally make a comment. Wow. And it's not somebody I know, somebody from what, some wooden boat shop. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so maybe just tell him, hey, thanks for watching. Yeah. He's well, interested I'm, in seeing how the boat's doing. You, you should do a pay-per-view. A pay-per-view, yeah. <laughs> Well, we're getting ready to do some scraping, so I, I wanted to put an edge on this little scraper. Tool sharpening? Yeah. He did a nice job. There was cracks here and here, so he welded up the cracks and then did a fill with his weld here. So they're actually stronger than the originals. Nice. Well, the, the original bolt the washer size up there is just under 5 8 it's symmetric size. Um, and so the quarter inch washer size is, is 11 16 or better. They would not fit up in the plug hole, and we didn't want to make the plug holes any bigger. So we took standard US washers, which are almost 3 quarters in diameter, and I bolted them together on this bolt, tightened the nuts up, and took them over to the grinder and the sander and sanded them down. A little bit. Well, yeah, almost an eighth of an inch, which is quite a bit on 61, to get them all round. So you'll Did see- you do that a hundred times? No, just once, but here's the washer seal. Oh, I see, so that then you use one- So we actually made, we took a three quarter inch washer and made it the size- That you needed it to- Of the original metric ones, see them? Mm. By bolting them together and then grinding them all at once. The other problem with these little bolts in this, particular place is they need to be inch and three quarters long. A two inches too long and an inch and a half is too short. Well, I've got a call in to get some inch and three quarters. See, bolts used to be available in three quarter inch increments, but in the last 30 years or so they quit doing that because they had a huge inventory. So inch and a half, two and two and a half and so forth. If we can't get the inch and three quarters, it's an oddball size, we just have to cut about 30 of them. Hand. Well, let's go see. Let's go see where they work. Yeah. Where they go in. Yeah, it's one of those little things. How are they all out now? All the deck bolts out? Half of them are out, and the other half are just tapped down. There's no worries because they also the the beams. I don't have a bolt into that margin piece, but they have a big screw going up in the cabin side. So they're not going in. Okay. What's going on at your house? The start of flu season. Ah, oh. lovely. You guys it's already getting, happening. Yeah, you getting a uh, flu shot? No. no I don't. Shot. I never get a flu shot. I read up on it the other night, and I'm not gonna. Most of them have mercury in them, and all this other stuff. And I was looking at the pros and cons, and no, no flu shots for my kids, right. kids or me. No. Yeah, no. Go for it. I yeah. Just, uh, no, they gotta have uh, immune systems. How's it going up there? What are we going to see? Oh, good. Clean. A lot different from last time. No wiring inside. Yeah, no wiring. Yeah. All right, let's go. We're going to go take a look. We pulled it out. Gee. All right. All right. We'll meet Dave. New character. We got a whole big jump thing. Exactly. Oh, look who's there. Everybody, this is David. 
How do you like to be known, Dave or David? Doesn't make any difference. Doesn't make any All right, he's going to be doing our electrical. Well, as long as the check clears, he's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> now we have John here today. Hey, good morning. One of the other things that, that I didn't pull out yet, I did some of them, is you need to talk about what you want to do with electronics. Right, that's your and have electronics. Sit, we have to sit down and have a, a conversation. My, my recommendation is that we replace it because uh -huh. two reasons. Number one, the technology course has advanced a lot from the old Signet and, and data marine instruments. Right. But uh, like your Furuno radar, it's a great radar, right. but it's an old radar. Right, no, and we should replace that on so, the display. Well, the problem with that is if we don't, then what happens is the minute the boat's all back together and back sailing, the radar fails. Right. No, no, we want yeah, to get so new radar. We want to get an, integra in for three days we want get an integrated system, yeah. a fully, yeah. like an integrated yeah, system. Yeah, like the Furuno or the Ray Marine that's right, got the that big screen. Right, that has the GPS, and yeah, exactly, okay. and multiple functions. Good. And, and then send a repeater, repeater up here absolutely. or just go to an iPad, something mm -hmm. like that, okay. which will be fine. Yeah. I'd like to keep the old as well. There's no reason not to have the nice old gauges with the mm -hmm. little propeller that's spinning still because we want to keep as much original, you know, mm -hmm. detail as possible. Okay, what we've got right now is every other bolt is out. Every other bolt is still in them even though it's punched down. Okay. Mostly as a locator. But these beams have a big screw underneath too that goes up into the cabin side. Every other hole, we're going to put them in here. Then every other hole here, they're going to go and basically pull down on the plywood, getting a mechanical... Uh, so you're nice. going to wait until the plywood's right. down and then put in it? Yeah, so we're going to put every other bolt in right away now. and so forth. Anyway, these and that way the plywood will become a more structural part of the whole... Exactly. See, this bolt doesn't have tie rods. It was built kind of light, the deck especially, because they were trying to save weight. It's kind of like a racer cruiser. So it's not real traditional and doesn't even have a house carlet. So there's no tie rods, so they got their strength through the plywood. Okay. Those knees went here. Yeah. And as you know, the, the, the bolts we covered last time. But we've got our cuts made here in a very clean seam now, all the way around, and a good surface for gluing and installing in the deck. Okay. okay. And all found all good wood in there? Yep. Now how far back did you have to cut into this? Oh, just barely. In some places, we didn't hardly take any off. Okay. Uh, but as much as almost an eighth to get a nice fair curve okay. and to get rid of any discrepancies in the wood itself. But for the most part, it was just paper thin that we cut out. Same here on the, on the covering boards. The cuts we made here were almost nothing to as much as an eighth of an inch to get this a good fair surface all the way. You got the windlass off. Uh huh. The uh, blo blocking underneath is pretty complicated, but we just left it until we made a decision on, on what windlass we were going to put back. Remember, we talked about the ideal. Yeah, the one that's yeah. Yeah. Um, Dave center, likes them. Center one, one coming up. Yep, the motor's under the deck. And Dave we, likes them. He likes them? Yep. Where, real, where would you put it? Well, most people offset them. They don't put them center line, um, mainly because you don't want the anchor changes coming right down the middle of the boat necessarily. You could put them in the center line. But because of their smaller size, we could move it up onto the foredeck, reinforce that underneath, or we could put it offset. Because my experience has been probably 80% of the people end up getting two of them. One on one side, one on the other? Yeah. And that would be seem better, making them more symmetrical. Well, and you, if you have two anchors out, like a Bahamian moor, then you can concentrate on getting one anchor up first, get it all out of the way, and then pull your second anchor up without having to switch chain and line everything over to the windlass. That's so the put one on one side and one on the other like that. Yeah. Probably somewhere in here. And then it keeps this whole nice center space open, too. Yep. And when you say up a little bit, just in front of this bulkhead, well, one of the things we want to, want to make sure we get covered today is, and it's not as important as other stuff because it can happen later, is where we want that chain to actually end up. Okay. I think we're limited to right underneath the V-bird. Yeah, I think that's got, I mean. Yeah. Now the question is how do we get there? Yeah, well, we can, we can do it. Forward of the, forward, of, I, I'd like to keep it forward. I mean, I just have to get over the idea that there's going to be two rollers 
It's uh -huh. in there and there. Could they go in this section right here? They could. And somehow still manage to get the chain. Well, the, one, the thing go. you have to remember, though, is those windlasses, the motor does stick down under the deck. Yes. So you're going to have a motor sticking down about this big. Yeah, that's why I want it in front of the bulkhead. We can do that. And they're a lot lighter than this. Yeah. That was a heavy yeah. windlass. Lowering that down was uh, <clears throat> exciting. So <laughs> <laughs> you could go here. Yeah, and there. Put one on and say, Doug, I really love this or I hate this. You know what I mean? Yeah. OK, Charles, get ready for a big surprise. Electrical system, it's all gone. It's a big hole. Don't worry, it's going to go back. All the wiring is gone. We're going old school here, baby. No electrical. We're just going to sail, just wind power. We really stripped this thing down for racing now, Charles. Well, we ordered a bunch of new oil lamps. <laughs> oh, yeah, oil lamp. Nice. Uh, wood stove Look, the window's gone. Oh, jeez. It feels like you can actually come down here and see a boat. Well, what we'll do now is see where all that wiring was. There was years of painting over it. Yeah. So you don't want to scrape the whole spill and get that painted up nice before we... What happened to the cabinet? <laughs> What cabinet? Like here, there was a cabinet there. Oh, that's down below. Oh, you took those out, or you just crack, crack, cracked them out, you know? Well, we saved as much as we could, but a lot of this stuff is so old that, you know, there's a lot of cleanup. Like, you see the back of this. There's some Which mildew. piece was this? This one right here. Yeah. And they had all the holes from the old electronics. And, and you can see how it's really kind of funky over here. and. Yeah, yeah. So it's, all of this stuff is a trade-off. You spend five hours trying to glue it back together. And well, as you said, it's a fine line between a restoration and a rebuild. Exactly. You know, so we want a, a restoration. And then, like we talked about, this chart table was really fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that we want to do something with anyway. Well, I'd like to make that flush, open that up. Right, so that, that's mm -hmm. pretty much gone. Let's match the two sides. Why does it kick out there? We could have a shorter drawer drawer that starts there, just a little drawer. Mm -hmm. And that would give you that whole extra space. Somebody could sit there. Yeah, I mean, you can kick back there in the corner. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to have 20 people, but you might have six or seven. Or three, or three yeah. or four there. OK. But what we're going to do now is start in the four peak okay. work with the back. interior and work back. Now, the closet, we decided we're going to lose the closet. Now, the closet is it, I don't think it's worth saving for what? I mean, you can put it in your garage. Yeah. Um, uh, well, it's kind of pretty if you just left it there and left the door open. <laughs> uh, How about this? How about if we took the face show off? and mounted it on the bulkhead. Oh, mounted this there? Yeah. You could, except it's the wrong size for that. Yeah, it's, it's coming in pretty tight there. I, I would just say that, you know, unless it has some sentimental value. Well, it has a little bit of sentimental value. We used to talk back and forth when we were kids. We'd be uh -huh. up front, and then this is all closed. We'd, you know, and pretend we were, you know, Pirate. the next door neighbor and knock it on the door in the middle of the night, yeah. bug my mother, <laughs> bug my parents. Well, I'll, so, what we can do is we can carefully remove it. Okay. And if it'll fit out the hatch, then we'll, we'll at least we'll at least try to save the face of it. And you know what? If we do something, if we do a nice treatment for the bulkhead, mm -hmm. Renee would like to like do like a wood, like a veneer. Well, see, here you can do that because we have this aluminum that's this rabbited around the yeah, bulkhead. Yeah. So you're getting, gonna gain, you know, let's yeah. say, an eighth inch thickness. So you, you, can, you can lay something in there. You can lay something in there, but you'd have to stop short of that aluminum. There's a rail back. No, yeah. Then. But we'll see. We'll get this out of the way and make okay. a decision. We have to fix that bulkhead then and remove that airflow, put it somewhere else. Well, this is for Mica. Okay. Of some brand, I don't know. Hey, Charlie? Yeah. Just uh, be careful not to step in the tar. Okay, wet? Yeah. 
No, it's not wet, but it's it's not completely hard. Well, Dave stuck his foot in there. If you stand on it, you'll eventually sink into it. So. Dave, you made that nice hole there. Here Real in good. the main cabin, captain's quarters, Doug likes this whole setup. We've taken out the shelving. Holy shit, Doug. <laughs> it's all gone. Charles, you know, Judy would be so upset. But we saved these pieces, right? Well, a lot of those were plywood, and they were delaminating. The white? Yeah. And so they're basically, at this point, most... But we need to take, we need to know what they look like so we can remake them. To well, we've got them. We, we saved them. Well, that's the same here, like this. Some of this is kind of a little crappy. The frame, on the outer, yeah, there might be, board. yeah, but but you know what? Maybe it's just of all the things we don't have to change that. No, and there again, you, this is one of those things. <clears throat> you just take a buzz bomb and you sand it really good. Mm -hmm. I would paint this white. Okay, nice. Because now when you lift the and cushion, seal it. Right, and seal it. Now when you lift the cushion, you got this bright light shining up. But would you change that? Would you like <clears throat> unscrew it and take it all out? I think we could. We just screw it in with slot head screws. Yeah. And that way we get in here and... Look at all the old screws there. Well, like when we're doing our hull work. Yeah. How are you... But you can't yeah. get in there, so... But you take this top off, but would you take the whole frame out as well? Uh, no, no, I don't think so. No, that'll come out. And just these, the top. And then you just can the reach. top. See, because when we go to replank here, you're going to have to get in here to clean the glue, to sand and repaint all this stuff. Right. And with this in there, you just can't do it. Now, so. how about up here? Look at these knees. Well, this, these look pretty good, and they don't have any rust to speak of like the other ones did. Just sand them and paint them? Yeah. I mean, this has got a little bit of stuff going on. We can just seal that with Smiths and fill it. What was that, a little dead wood? Just old buildup of paint and crap. Um, but this is where the knees went that we took out. And so what would look like? Oh, that's okay. They were real rusty, especially right in these corners. So we're going to wire brush that and osfo it to kill the rust. I see. Yeah. And then clean all that up and then put them back in, probably with dolphinite, something like that, just seal them up. Um, yeah, this this cabin, there's not much to change because it's, and don't forget, you got a mast sitting here. Yeah. So the mast will make the cabin feel even smaller. Oh, sure. But it's good. But this two, is all good. Yeah. Two full-size adults. Um, now what we're thinking of is possibly when the closet's gone, can we make the thing a little bit wider? The cabin? No, the, no. the, the, the bunk. Could it somehow expand a little bit? Well, I really wouldn't, only because it's a lot of work, um, mm -hmm. expense for okay. a very little gain. Galley. And the, the, the problem I see with this galley, and this is from years of sailing boats out here, is this. This unit? It's not practical. Because no, it's you not. You have to get on your knees to, to get anything. And if the boat's heeled over and you open that door, things fly out, right? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Yeah. You can't get in there you know. when the boat is heeled. And then in addition to that, the sink is now over here. So yeah. It's your head. Um, so I'm wondering if we shouldn't look into a top-loading fridge that's not in the galley. That's not in the galley. Well, yeah, in other words... <clears throat> then that opens up a lot of space for the gal. Exactly. And it's not so much that if I'm in here cooking away and you want to get past me, you know, it's a wrestling match. Well... So, if you think about being in your kitchen... You can't really gain much room, but you're saying if you could gain even that those few inches. Well, a few inches on a boat is a ton. Yeah. It's like if you're in your house cooking and you yeah. want to go to the refrigerator, it's ten feet away, the fridge. Yeah. Or five, it's, you have to walk over... So... Well, that's why this is good. One guy can just stay there and get it all done without having to go back. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really I would I would love to see the sink out here. Sure. Out here, and in other words, reverse this. And then where's your counter space? Your work 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 surface. All all back here. Yeah. I mean, this is good, but boy, this is. Well, we'd like to look at some other setups. I'm sure there are other some combo units, mm -hmm. sink. Uh, you know, storage units for boats. Yeah, and this sink could be deeper. Yes. But yeah, I hate, we, I've always hated this little <laughs> pump system. It's, yeah, it's... You know, and the double thing, and you're reaching over. You, yeah, it's very difficult. Now, the pump was to drain it? No, the pump was in case the, you didn't have any... Uh, water pressure? Water pressure. Okay. I'm, I'm just yeah, so we want to look at a new unit here. Yeah, we want to look at a new stove. 
Well, you mentioned it a couple of times, and I think we can do better. And again, this this one is not 50 years old, but it's about 30 years old. Well, we we kind of shined it on because we we're too busy with the deck and the planking. But now that we we're moving to the interior, it's time to kind of start talking about this stuff because we're gonna get rid of the closet, do the V-berth, and kind of figure out some kind of an anchor chain ramp situation. And then as we work our way back, we're not gonna do a lot in here. Right. No. I mean, Got some we gotta build. No, then we here. gotta get in here. Th these rooms here, bathroom and kitchen, mm -hmm. are big, you know, toilets gotta come out. We want a new. I would like to talk to you about getting an electric toilet. Dave's your man. Yeah, yeah. Great. He knows all that stuff. And uh, and a little uh, a little hot water on demand, possibly. Maybe it's silly. Uh, no, yeah. I I think it's possible. Propane, you mean? Uh yeah, possibly. Well, yeah. my experience has been that you're very seldom unless you're voyaging. You don't really cook when you're underway. No, but it's you boil water. Yeah. Or you coffee. make some hot hard-boiled eggs. Yep. Uh, soup, actually. Soup, coffee, soup. tea. So a Gimbal stove, you can make, you can do all those. Mm -hmm. You can keep a crew happy with hot soup. And then storage in the back there are some cabinets. Well, they, there were some. Yeah. And they came to here. Yeah. And again, they were plywood. They were just falling apart. Yeah. So we can. But they were like they were basically made like this. So, if we're going to redo stuff, I'd like to redo it kind of in this style. Uh, well, they were a little different. Okay. They were, they were yeah, that they were oval shaped. Okay, yeah, they were, right, they were, the old, they were open, just, oval shaped ones that were... Right, they were open. Uh, yeah, and which is fine, because what you put back there, your dishes and stuff like that, and a little bit of food storage. But these cabinets are essential. This is like our pantry. Mm -hmm. This one over here. And this one over on this side. This is this is the these are the pantry, right. for the most part. Now it, it it may be that you can get one of these that's been quote marinized, that is has rails in it, so when you open it, everything doesn't fly out. Mm -hmm. and we can, can make something. It could be up here. The refrigerator. Yeah. Uh huh. So the sink's here. The refrigerator opens here. Oh. That might be a good way to go. Yeah. You have a little bit of storage under the sink. Yeah. And that's that. Yeah. So Johnny and Dave have been consulting oh. while we've been talking, and you guys have come up to some decisions. Well, uh, including like, no, no, we're not going to use the old panel. Charles, say goodbye to the panel. It's dead. It's dead, Jim. The new one will be much, much better. Really? Everything all together. Right, everything what? 110 and 12 volt all together. All the instrumentation, everything will be all in one place. Wow, okay. Nice, clean, tidy. So all these same things will be represented in the new panel? In a different fashion and not as many, well, more more in one sense, because you're gonna have more circuits. Right. But not, you won't have a separate one for compass light, a separate one from chart light. They'll all be part of running lights. Yes. Okay. Things like that. So Great. some so nice. of these will be combined and then there'll be some additional. Okay. The Great. other advantage is all the new panels, the labels that tell you what the switch is, is backlit. Ah. And there's a little indicator light to tell you when it's on. Oh, very nice. So when you've turned it on, you don't have to guess. Am I on or off? Hey, is it on? <laughs> okay, nice. You know, and, nice. And at night, all the labels are backlit. Great. And is so that all are... LEDs or something yeah. like that? Great. Great. So you Great. were telling me that the location of the panel was kind of problematic because it was right where all the drip was when people came down the, uh, yeah. the yeah, gangway. Well, so that yeah. was one of the reasons you wanted yeah. to take it Yeah, want to out. move the panel from where it was behind the companionway ladder and move it someplace else, which is yet to be determined. Either where the, the bottle storage locker is there, so the one, app one, 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 one over. One over. Or depending on how Doug rebuilds the chart table, maybe over in that corner. Okay. Which I would prefer. Normally when you're at the chart table and you got all your switches, all your information, your electronics, everything's right there. Right, now whether, uh, we may be losing the whole chart table so, since we don't really we don't, do at this charts. Point, yeah, at this point we don't really know okay. exactly how the main salon is gonna be rebuilt. I'll work with Doug on that. Okay. But those are the two possible locations for electrical panels, somewhere okay. aft, but not behind the companionway ladder. Not there. And no. why? Why is that a bad place? Uh, for one reason, it's hard to get to. Right. It's to reach always... through the ladder if you yeah. want to do something <laughs> in a hurry. The other thing is anybody coming down the companionway ladder, wet with foul weather gear and stuff, is right. splashing water around. You, you know, even with those locker doors. You know, now 
what do you do? Keep the locker doors closed, and you can't see what's going on with the meters and the gauges. Right. You know, but you won't get as much water on it, but you can't see what's going on. So, now we mount the electrical panel someplace else where it's accessible, visible. Great. And then and use that space for more pantry or whatever, more storage. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, you might want to consider on the starboard app, uh, there's, a, there's a little... Uh, Closet there. Yeah, either. That we, we never really seem to use for anything well, significant. That was, that was the wet like well, well, weather locker. No, no, I'm no, the one, no, the one along well, the side, well, the one that we well, use for like a tool, you have a to, tool locker. You have to go over the settee to get to it. Okay. So, yeah. Anyway, right, I'll, right. I'll talk with Doug and see how the main salon is going to get reshaped, okay. and then that will determine where the electrical panel okay. is going to go. Great. Tentatively, either where the bottle locker is or on the aft port. Side. I was also thinking that in the head, the closet in the head, where we have to put obviously some equipment for the toilet, and there's a closet in there. Maybe that could be an electrical closet. No, not good. I, I think Doug's no, point was to keep it away from anywhere where we have a constant source of water. Water. Okay, yeah, very good. Get okay. away from the dampness. Okay. And size-wise, the same size or smaller? Uh, it's going to be smaller, more, much more compact. It won't take up near that amount of room. Uh, no, no. So we, uh, we were talking about possibly having a, like a little on-demand hot water, right. even though that is kind of silly. But all, but really, uh, a new toilet we, because we need a holding tank. We don't have a holding tank, so that's a that's actually the much more important, vital. Otherwise, we can't really go right. into port. So, from an electrical point of view, you you and I have talked about that about needing a macerator and. Mm -hmm. And that, and right, we were thinking of having like an electric and, toilet. Uh, well, well, you have to chew the stuff up before, to get it out of the boat. Yeah, you have to if you want up. an electric flush toilet, that's fine. It draws power. Right. Well, it doesn't run that much. But if you're going to do that, then we need to know because we have to plan the panel to have a circuit breaker for it. I, I would say we'd like an electric flush toilet yeah. for all the things because almost everybody you bring on board is like, they don't know how to use a, a pump toilet. You know, that's fair, that's fair. Right. if we're going to put the whole thing I in, a whole system in. Left the valves open and, you know, had water come pouring in. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. We're going to have, have to put it. Electric, electric head and a holding tank. You have a macerator to discharge the holding tank. And that's it. And you can you dump that at sea when you're over three miles out? You can just pump out yourself? Yeah, the switch. And I'm off. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Well, that, I think, is that's like an essential right. you just new do, system. Right. It is an essential new system, and that has to be worked with Doug to find the spot, the spots that everything go in. Right. But the power will be there to do that. Okay. We'll keep did, everything we can. Did, uh, what about the refrigeration and... I think the refrigerator should be pulled. It's a 12-volt system. It's old. Yes. It should be pulled and replaced along with all of the pumps. Do we have enough power to run a small freezer? Well... I'm not a refrigeration expert. Usually the way it works is you build a refrigeration system, the ice box, and you have two separate sections in the ice box. I don't know which yours has. One normally be a freezer section right. and the other one a reefer. Yeah. And if you use like a cold plate type refrigeration system, the cold plate goes in the freezer side and then you have spillover. So Correct. That's what we had it, before. It probably won't keep ice cream. Right. It would keep a bag of ice cubes and probably keep them from melting. And we even was able to make some ice over the course of a day. We'd make like one tray of yeah. ice cubes. The problem with when you when you start talking that is you stop start talking power. Because now the reefer has to run all the time to try and make the ice and things like that. Um, the best way, and, and I think that I didn't look in your ice box, that's probably an evaporator rather than a coal plate. Which is the, the ribbed aluminum looking thing. Like oh, yes, you see exactly. Yeah, yeah. That's probably what it is. They're not as efficient as a cold plate. Yeah, it's like, right, like a little round one. Yeah, so. And there was a little compressor or condenser, whatever it was, up in the V. Yeah, in, it's, in the up, it's still there. And, and if it works, I don't see any reason to replace that. Okay. If it, if it did what you wanted it to do before. A new unit wouldn't come with that built in. Well, no. And I'm not sure why you'd even have to worry about a new unit. If that one works, it's not old. Well, because it's, it's a combination uh, refrigerator, drawer, and sink. Okay. And if we wanted to replace that yeah. unit. Okay. So then what you do is you look. You can look in the West Marine catalogs or any of those. I, I'm not sure whether Adler Barber's still making them or they call it the cold machine. There's all kinds of manufacturers of 12-volt refrigeration systems. Okay. 
The key of any of those is building an ice box that's extremely well insulated, six inches of insulation, that kind of stuff. Okay. Because now, because the the box it determines how long that reaper is going to run. So if you're going to go out to sea for a few days or whatever, you pack the ice box with a couple of blocks of ice and all your food and stuff. You make sure the reaper's been on for a long time, several days and before you leave. Okay. So everything's nice and cold, and then you don't open the ice box much, and then the reaper's not going to have to run that much right. to keep. Or you could run it a, a couple hours a day. Well, you could also run it a couple hours it a day with run the, the engine run. on, right? Like that. But the problem is to the, the reefer is going to draw power if you're if it's really working hard to try and keep stuff cold. Right. It, right. No pressure valve. Okay. Yeah. But yeah. So a new putting in a new 12 volt unit's easy. Okay. So if you want to rip that out, put in a new a new unit. Right. There's plenty of 12 volt units that are available. Next two weeks, all the all the toothpicks come off, any epoxy fillets we have to do and repairs, scraping the beams and the carlins and all that, and the shear clamp where the old wiring was, so we can get it smooth, ready for some paint. <clears throat> and then bolting the deck beams back to the cabin. Every other one. And, Every other one, right? Uh-huh. And then uh, sometime in the next couple weeks, hopefully we'll have a, a decision on the windlass so we can put our blocking in. Um, and then the beat berth. We're gonna lay that out, get our support cleats in and all our heights, get rid of the closet in the, we'll call it the- That's master. a big, big decision. <laughs> closet. Yeah, you got it. We'll remove it gingerly, put it aside. I don't know. It's called letting still... go, letting go. Okay, we're, we're gonna confirm that with Johnny down here in a few <laughs> seconds. Well, we've always thought it would be great to have access to the beeper from the main cabin. Yeah. And the only way to make that happen, really, is to lose the closet. Yeah. So let's do that, because that'll be a nice thing to be able to do. It'll make the place so much bigger. And it's not that practical. I, I know what they were thinking back in the day. Just need to be able to hang up a sport coat, because you, well, you know you take this boat to the yeah. to the club and have dinner at the exactly. club. You gotta have a place to put a hanger jacket. But we're gonna still put a hanger on the back of that door. So you can hang up your jacket anyway yeah. on the door. Well you just reach around the beaver and hang them on the boat. Yeah. yeah. And and it was so that the the captain's quarters, I guess. He could get to his side of the closet and you could get to your side. You know what I mean? That's why I had a door either side. Uh, that, wasn't that the thinking? Maybe. Or maybe. if you had to, you could maybe. crawl through that damn thing. You could crawl through, yeah. This is going to make it huge in there. Okay. All right. And then we got a bunch of miscellaneous stuff like cutting off bolts, rebolting uh, the sheer clamp and shelf where the old bolts we showed you were corroded away. Yeah. Um, and just a bunch of miscellaneous okay. repairs. And then we have to start looking at new, some new uh, systems like uh, the toilet, refrigerator, and uh, sink. Yep. Still and stove is easy. We'll just put a new one in in that same place. The stoves, you know, they're, some are better than others, but they're not that expensive and they come in all sizes. And a lot of people argue to get rid of that damn oven. Yeah, we talked about that last night, actually. But no, you know what? What's nice about an oven, you can put a couple of chickens in it and, like, put it on low for all day long while you're sailing. And when you get there, you got some hot, fresh, you know, something that's cooked. And you, well, don't, you don't have to tend it. You don't have to sit there and cook it. It's yeah. just done. <laughs> well, I found an oven is excellent storage for pots and pans. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> and your responsibility is where you want lights, because that affects where my wire goes. The type of light doesn't necessarily affect it, but you okay. want to start looking and picking your lights and sure. you know, that kind of stuff. You want to, uh, we'll probably put AC outlets essentially back where they were, but we need, and you can tell those by the cutouts. <laughs> right. Okay? Determine whether you want more and where. Okay. Yeah. The decisions, battery decision will be made once we determine the space the batteries are going to go in. Okay. Because Doug's going to rebuild that area. So once we know where the batteries are going to go, we will put batteries in that's the most amper hours we can get in the physical space, whether that's 6 volts or more 12 volts. We're going to use the space to get as many amper hours as okay. we can get. Okay, so we might, we're, he might move the location. That might be good. That might free up some space exactly. for so a uh, Once that's for determined, else. then that will determine what kind of batteries we put in okay. so that we get the most amper hours for the physical space we have to be in. The other decision that you have to make is what we talked about, the battery switch. Right. Is whether you have two battery switches or a single battery switch. 
And what does that mean? Right now we have a situation where you had one switch that turned on the power to the whole house, as they call it, all the internal power. Right. And a different switch that turned that ran power to the battery to recharge the starter battery. Yeah, to actually start the engine. Start, start the engine. engine. So but then it had an automatic solenoid thing for charging so that the alternator would charge both banks. Okay. That's complicated. It's got more crap. My keep it simple way to do it is just put in what's called a perco switch. It's a red on, one, all, two switch. Right. You say, okay, the house bank's going to be two, the engine bank's going to be one. All right. you, you select which battery you want to use for what. Okay. You select which battery you want to charge. Okay. The problem that you have is that if you, say, are motoring over to the islands, you drop the anchor, you shut the engine off, you have to remember to turn that battery switch to two so it's just on the house and the engine battery's isolated. Okay. Because right. otherwise you could drain the engine battery. The situation you had before, unless you had a solenoid failure, the batteries were isolated. Okay. If, you, if the solenoids would have failed, your batteries would have been combined and they'd all gone dead. So okay. That's, I, I recommend the keep it simple thing, but you have to remember that you have, have to turn that switch to the house bank right. whenever you're at sea and the engine's not running. That ultimately gives you more options. Gives you more options. But you, but you have to be a little smarter. You have to be a little. Oh, I think. Well, we're sailing a boat with people's lives at stake. Let's hope we can switch a switch. Exactly. That's you know. And, and just put up a little I note. Let, that's my son does. He writes it because he turns off the refrigerator in the guest house to record his music, and he's left it off. And the, 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 you know, you get all the water on the ground. And so we told him, you better figure it out, dude, or you can't have access. So he's like writing it on his hand. Turn on refrigerator. Right. So you know he does it. So we'll figure. It. Yeah, I like that idea. Keep it simple also. I'm a keep it simple, stupid kind of guy. I okay. like it as simple as we Great. can make it. Great.